Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I know there are a lot of uh, attendees watching around the world. I'd like to thank you to VIP, the SRS, and the many people it took to organize this ambitious first virtual World Robotics Symposium. I've been a member of the SRS for more than a decade, and as always, it's a privilege to be here today. If you tuned in to hear Gary give the presentation before me, you know that he shared his view of the innovations that have taken place over the past 25 years and what surgery looks like in the age of computing. I'll build on that vision and walk you through the roadmap of intelligent interventions in cancer. 2020 is definitely a year of milestones. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the founding of Intuitive. This year also marks the 20th anniversary of the first robotic-assisted laparoscopic radical prostatectomy. As a da Vinci robotic urologist, that milestone is particularly important to me. So I thought it might be kind of fun and interesting to reflect back on what was happening 20 years ago compared to what's happening now. If you look back to the year 2000, or Y2K, we were all concerned about our computers catching a bug. Now in the year 2020, we're concerned about catching a bug ourselves, or our family, our loved ones, our neighbors, our coworkers, with COVID-19 clearly being top of mind for most and probably all of us. In 2000, only 43% of Americans were connected to the internet. In 2020, 50 billion things are reportedly connected to the internet, a milestone that's been talked about for years. And Intuitive has been part of the OR Internet of Things for more than a decade. In 2000, the Nokia 3310 debuted and was considered state-of-the-art in mobile technology. Does anyone remember playing the game Snake? You could play this for hours right there on your screen. What an experience. In 2020, we're now able to configure an operating room via a mobile tablet. Times have definitely changed. In 2000, the first draft of the human genome was released. Today, the top 10 gene sequencing companies have more than five billion in revenue, with Illumina leading the way with 3.3 billion. In 2000, the Sim simulation game allowed legions of followers around the globe to be part of a virtual world living a virtual life. In 2020, virtual reality simulation, gamified or task-based or procedural, is proving to be an excellent tool for surgeons to learn new skills or enhance current skills or simply maintain them, something that's particularly important in this era of COVID. In 2000, the da Vinci surgical system was our first robotic surgical system. I know many of you in the audience and particularly those um, pioneering faculty members fondly remember when you first gained access to a da Vinci standard system. It was truly state of the art with 3D imaging, wristed instruments and integration through software. It was the first time that a computer was put between a surgeon and a patient, taking off a new era of digital surgery. In 2020, this is likely what you think about when you think of surgical robots. Here's the XI multiport, or you might think of the SP single port system, or you might think of ION, the robotic endoluminal system to biopsy nodules in the periphery of the lung. In 2000, these systems were digital. In 2020, they're intelligent. Clearly the world has changed and the pace of innovation has had a profound impact on the world. So if that much has changed in just 20 years, I can only imagine what the next 20 years will hold. I wonder what we'll be saying when 2040 rolls around. Let's take a look at a version of that future with a new video by Intuitive. In the 20th century, global life expectancy more than doubled. In the future, Intuitive's focus won't only be on extending how long we live, but also on extending how well we live. Da Vinci is ready. In the meantime, here's Dr. Singh. 
Good to see you again. If your biopsy is malignant, we'll take you straight to surgery. Lung adenocarcinoma confirmed. Confirming, Jack Sue's nodule is malignant. OR number nine is being prepped. I'd like three additions to my case cart, the fluorescent scope, imaging agents, and the microstapler. Confirmed. Initiate timeout. The patient is Jack Sue, who is having a right upper robotic assisted segmentectomy. Everyone ready? Project thoracic visualization. Dr. Singh has completed the segmentectomy on Jack Sue. Thank you, everyone. Great job. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Amara Singh. Thanks to Paul for having me speak. Any questions? is intelligent. The future is intuitive. As a surgeon, a technology leader, and a healthcare futurist, it's really exciting to think about what's possible. But I'm not sure that it'll take 20 years to get there. The building blocks are already in place. Over the past 20 years, we've seen the proliferation of technology and other capabilities that are enabling important shifts in healthcare. A lot has changed. As we enter the era of target therapy and immunotherapy, one may rightly ask, is there still going to be a role for physical intervention? I believe the answer is yes. The fundamental principles of cancer management will remain the same. Find the tumors early and take them out. But there'll be an even greater emphasis on the patient experience and quality of life. As we look at what's possible with all this pace of innovation, it's important to stay grounded in what problem we, as a community, are really trying to solve. At its core, we are seeking to help you advance the quadruple aim, achieve better outcomes, enhance the patient's experience, take care of the caregivers, and reduce the overall total cost of care. This requires mastery in several domains. Technical mastery, how do I use robotics, imaging, computing, and analytics to get better as a surgeon? Clinical mastery, how do you design a system that enables the right clinical outcomes? And beyond that, as you look across an OR or a hospital or a health system, how do you perfect workflows and achieve the right economics in a way that enables you to standardize in certain things that you know works? All of this with the goal to advance the quadruple aim. Better outcomes, better patient experience, better care team experience, and a lower total cost of care. You heard Gary talk about this earlier. We know that from previous examples that progress is possible. The world has done it before. Take prostate cancer, for example. In the past four decades, the survival rate has increased 30 percentage points, and now it's about 98%. Is it because urologists are incredibly intelligent and talented people? Well, yeah, but there are a few other reasons too. 
Screening was important. I believe PSA testing had a major impact. Diagnostic capabilities have improved. Now many men have multiparametric MRIs and subsequent targeted biopsies. Treatment options have also improved, including better, less invasive ways to perform surgery. We're all grateful to Pat Walsh. And as Da Vinci robotic surgeons, we are also grateful for the pioneering work done by Manny Menon and of course VIP to lead the way. In contrast to the great improvement we've seen in prostate cancer, let's take a look at lung cancer. Today, the average five-year survival rate of lung cancer is about 18%. And this has barely changed over the past four decades. I think we can do better. So how do we get there? First, we must bring in the right technology to the right patient at the right time. There's no one-size-fits-all solution. Second, we must approach cancer in a disease-specific approach, not viewing it from the lens of a surgeon versus a pulmonologist versus oncologist. You know the adage, never ask a barber if you need a haircut. Although that might not be a great analogy right now, given that all the barber shops and hair styles have been closed for the past few months, probably actually is right that we all do need haircuts right now. But I digress. The third issue is how we deliver the technology, whether it's within the lumen or outside the lumen, should be seen as complementary modalities. They're not competitive. Finally, we must realize that robotics is just the starting point. It's a question of what ancillary technologies are going to be built on robotic platforms to accelerate progress. You saw the potential future uh, laid out in the video that I showed you. Let's walk through a hypothetical case study to highlight some of these points. A 65-year-old man presents with a 1.5 centimeter solid spiculated lung nodule in the left upper lobe. On PET, the nodule has hypermetabolic activity. It looks suspicious. To get a biopsy, we can proceed with a robotic bronchoscopy, such as ion. Using the robotic catheter, we can enter the lung transorally, navigate through the airways, and reach the nodule using direct vision, machine learning, and augmented reality software. ION uses fiber optic real shape technology to determine its three-dimensional coordinates at all points along the catheter. This precision allows the operator to confidently navigate to the periphery of the lung using a three millimeter catheter. With ION's vision probe, you have real-time vision of the airway while navigating the target and a fiber optic real shape sensor that measures the full shape of the catheter hundreds of times per second, providing real-time precise location and shape information throughout the whole navigation and biopsy process. The fiber optic real shape sensor is thin, flexible, and not sensitive to metal objects. As you can see in this example, the operator can control the catheter from a console. In the navigation screen, you can see the video image, a virtual image, and additional information about the catheter's behavior. With a three millimeter diameter catheter and the navigation software, one can easily make a sharp turn up into the apex of the left lung. Once at the lesion, ancillary technology can be used to confirm the location and biopsies can confidently be performed. If the catheter diameter was larger than three millimeters, you might not be able to do this. The key to stage shifting is early diagnosis. The key to early diagnosis is being able to biopsy nodules in the periphery when they are small. That's why with ION, we stayed true to our commitment to clinically meaningful innovation, focusing on reach, safety, and efficacy. We knew the status quo, a larger catheter, would be insufficient. In this hypothetical case study, the biopsy came back as lung adenocarcinoma. So what should we do next? We really have three different options. We can resect it, we can use radiation, or we can burn it. With a 1.5 centimeter cancer, it would seem that any of these options could be done. But in this case, the PET scan showed slight uptake in one of the hyalur lymph nodes. Local non-surgical therapy would have left that node behind. So we decided to proceed with robotic-assisted surgery. But when we talk about robotic-assisted surgery, there's more than one type. This is the Da Vinci XI system. It's the fourth generation of our Da Vinci surgical robot that is the culmination of two decades of experience in this area. There's also a uniportal option in robotic assisted surgery. 
This is the Da Vinci SP system. It also has four arms, but they are coupled together so they can come through a 2.5 centimeter trocar. The surgeon can use wrist instruments and see through an articulating 3D high definition camera. While currently only clear in the US for urologic procedures and tours, there may be a future for this technology and other indications as well. As you can see, when we refer to robotic assisted interventions, we offer a menu of choices, multiport, uniport, or no port. But again, these are just the platforms. Innovation is not just about a robot. We're developing technology that can build on the robotic platform to augment the physician's abilities. The technology foundations are already in place. For example, smart instruments, such as the Shoreform stapler, have the ability to monitor tissue compression a thousand times per second, and it can adjust the progression of the staple line to allow for sufficient compression. Use of integrated 3D anatomic scans can allow surgeons to review imaging real time and assess for anatomic nuances to aid in the accuracy of the dissection. Advanced energy continues to develop, such as the new synchro seal, which seals and cuts using advanced energy, a novel technology that's the first of its kind. Molecules will continue to progress and augment a surgeon's vision during surgery to see beyond what the naked eye can see. And finally, one day we could use molecules to guide our identification and dissection of lymph nodes. You can imagine in this hypothetical lung cancer case, the surgeon could find that suspicious lymph node and target it directly, conducting exactly the appropriate extent of surgery needed for this particular patient. But progress is not just about technology. It's not innovation for innovation's sake. Progress is about people and technology that blends seamlessly into their environment to deliver clinical and economic value. We need progress. In order to achieve this progress, we must work together as a community with the goal to improve cancer outcomes. Not just doubling the 18% to 36%, but how about tripling it to 72%? We know from the past that major change is possible. Together, we can make real progress we can build on robotic and aluminal and port-based platforms to enhance surgery and improve outcomes. We believe that eventually, as a community, we could double the survival of lung cancer patients. We could even dare to believe that we can accomplish even more. But let's not wait until 2040. There are too many patients that need help now. And we're excited to work with you to try and help these patients. Thank you.